Welcome back, everyone, to Disco Elysium. You're here with Ryan Lefebvre, otherwise known as Drax Craven. Didn't we want to talk to you it's about... It's raining again. It was clear just an hour ago. Um, tell me, what exactly do you have in your greenhouse in March? Well, uh, she points to her wheelbarrow. This might be the last snow we get. At least I hope so. Snow has nutrients in it. Helps everything green up in the spring. At least that's what my grandma always told me. Huh. Yes. Think about the coot grandma, not the weird snow. Squint your eyes. Disingenuous grandma. Stop looking at her. Look around. What do you see? The traffic jam? That's right. And the canal. The bookstore. The harbor gates. This is a great vantage point for keeping an eye on you. Are you by any chance keeping an eye on us? No, of course not. I don't understand what this is about. She looks towards the R and her expression clears. The kid did this right. The red-haired cat. Can't say a sentence without... Mmm. I was talking to him, yes. Maybe you shouldn't be. I mean, you do your job, but that kid is beyond help and he certainly won't help you. You've been resting here for quite a while, haven't you? The lieutenant intervenes, looking at her intently. Yes, I'm tired. I understand. The RCM isn't welcome here, and the locals want to keep an eye on us. Their silence, the smallest of smiles. That's okay, miss. Do what you have to do. I think we're done here. Shouldn't be long till we get the body down. Thanks for keeping me in the know, sir. That's weird. I could have sworn there's a way for you to get, um, gardener's gloves from her. Who's this guy? The man mutters to himself, accenting the beats as he goes. Tommy Lum. Tommy the man. A simple little cadence. He seems to be making it up as he goes. From another planet. Hey there. What's going on What's here? Jam, my man? He motions towards the sprawl of lorries with a sweeping gesture. What's the jam? It's a traffic jam for the ages. Harbor gates of the street are shut tight. No explanation given. Workers on strike. Scabs agitating. An all-around cluster fuck. Thanks for the heads up, Tommy. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long haul limbo. For days upon days upon days. Upon oh. days. <laughs> limbo, huh? So that's where I am. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. How long have you been here? I was here forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout, and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires the oil and the fumes of mazout um extravagantly phrased but i can roll yeah, with it imagine it's been a whole week already christ so tell me what do you need um do you know anything more about the strike it's like whatever's going on at the docks workers get a blockade set up making demands no way in or out what are they demanding it's pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane and half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like a strike negotiator type? They'd know what's up. Precise demands and so on. Ah, uh, yes. From the Wild Pines. We'll meet you soon enough, I'm sure. Uh, what do you think the company wants? They want to keep the money flowing in, my man. Ka-ching! He doesn't blame them. He's not on their side, that's for sure. Got it. Anything else I should know? Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I, I just do my job and I get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. All of who? Us lorry drivers. Come on yours. A few still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most are scurried off somewhere. To get drunk or high or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not you? Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. He glances down the road towards the horizon. A glint of something in his eyes. What's better than chasing transient pleasures? The more transient, the better. Once one's ended, you can get into the next one. Um, is there some change for a working stiff? Huh? Oh, no, I ain't got any money. They don't want to pay for unfinished work. They? The bosses, man. Makes sense. First work, then pay. I don't know who these bosses think they are. But that sounds like a good arrangement for them. Yeah, it sure ain't good for me. Or you. I'd spare a coin or two for a city cop down on his luck. If I had, say, four to myself. What are you hauling, anyway? Oh, high-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Relax. He's just joking. <laughs> Wicked. I've always wanted a friend in the underworld. <laughs> no, um, I'm joking. 
Uh, FALN runs a nice, clean business. This hall is cargo, mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits, that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad in the Occident, though we've been making headway in the Ilmarin market lately. Huh. Uh, so that's your machine behind you? This rockin' beauty? Sure is. Like a rash you can't get rid of. Interest in heavy-duty cargo machinery? A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Kailu and the neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up. Uh, enough to be some sort of FLAN rust bucket. Maybe the A6? That's an FLN A6 you got there. Good eye, my man. Yep, she's an old one, but reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. Could I get one of those tracksuits you're hauling? We're pals and all, but I can't just hand out the merchandise. The bosses wouldn't be happy. Right, right, right. I understand, I understand. Uh, you know anything about the dead guy? He ain't one of us drivers, I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked around. Been wasting time right here, keeping busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. All right. Never mind, then. Uh, catch you later, Tommy. Don't be a stranger. He seems a decent fellow. That's weird. Last time I walked through here, there was a pack of cigarettes lying on the ground, and my electrochemistry wigged the fuck out and made me go pick them up. I wouldn't be surprised if the rain has ruined them. A bold slogan. Humanox. Bosses Das. Horseback Monument. An old monument stands in the middle of the traffic island, pointing towards the sea. It looks as if it's been reassembled, piece by piece, secured and mounted in the air with, an aid, with the aid of numerous ropes and rods. Who is this? A silver plaque on the statue's pedestal reads, I am Philippe III, the squanderer, the greatest of the Philippian kings of Revachol, son of Philippe II, the opulent, father of Philippe IV, the insane. What did this king do? Eh. What did he do? You have no idea what you did a week ago. How would you know what this guy did many centuries ago? Yeah, fair enough. I'll have to up my encyclopedia if I want to learn. What do we have here? A white tank top. Plus one physical instrument. We will actually need that. So let me just put that on. Oh, but I've... Uh, never mind. i got to have that conceptualization. Ruins full of snow. No one lives here anymore. Oh, can I just loot this lorry? Well, no one's looking at it. What's in there? Oh, just some spare change. Okay. I'm not going to feel too bad about that then. Jeez, a lot of motor carriages pushed off to the side too. Foreign car, kept in good condition. Welcome to the strike. The lorries probably stored fuel here. Now they store booze. That looks to be a large lad. Bastards! We have a right to work! The man yells towards the harbor gates. His voice is the loudest of the lot and oddly screechy for a man of his size. Uh, you might recognize uh, this voice actor as one Felix Biederman. Uh, I am the law. What's going on here? Oh, stay frosty, everyone. Cops are here. The broad-shouldered man, broad-shouldered alpha male, turns to you. He's a full head taller than everyone else here. Here to fuck with us? Beat the honest worker down? Uh, hey, no. We're fighting for a cause here. Right to work. Right to work. Jesus. Besides, we're not that different. It helps the people see us talking. Cops and strike breakers together. Shows authorities are on our side. Builds confidence. Now, what kind of cause are we talking about? Rights of people. Rights of workers. To have gainful employment, to make a salary, and feed their families. His manner of speaking is wooden, the tone of voice bland and uninspired, almost as if he's compiling replies from a set of learned phrases. Hey, partner, I haven't chosen any sides yet. Might be time. Don't let the fat bastards crit on you. Cops tend to side with the higher up, but you're essentially still workers. Hmm. I don't trust cops, but I can see you understand the right to work. Right to work. God. All right, I got some Maybe questions you for you. Maybe you ask them the question, like why we're not allowed to make a living here. Shame on you. <laughs> we have families to feed, you piece of shit. Points his finger at the man on the railing. So do we, scub. Call me manana. Who are all these strike breakers? Honest men and women with rights to work, to be useful, not toys for corporate interests. The man runs a hand through his steadily graying military haircut. 
We came here to help the harbor run smoothly in a time of crisis. If union fucks don't want to work, they gotta let in those who do want to work! I have a question. Why did all these men follow your leadership? You think they follow because I'm big and loud? No, they follow the rules of the market. The rules of the economy because they were given a job to do! What is a strike? Alright, later man. GRIH, the Great Ravishall Industrial Harbor. Oh, that's a huge bitch! Yoink. I think this was the guy Scott? that. Hey! Uh, asks a man with jolly eyes, tilting his head. You're hazy on the notion of a scab. It smells like politics, though. Maybe it's got something to do with the flask he reaches for from time to time? What did you just call you? A f. No, no, not this again. You just got away from that fucking kid. Uh, I'm not a scab. I'm, I'm a cop. Kai was just messing with you. No one's ever seen a cop scab. <laughs> Imagine, you cops going on a strike, but then another cop comes in and says, let us cop for less money. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of, what brings the RCM here to the wild north? I've come, come to, to see the strife? I've come to Martinez investigating a murder. Murder, huh? Sounds like a lot of hard work. Never see me investigating a murder. Uh, um, whisper. I have no idea what I'm doing. He whispers back. That's okay. I have no idea what I'm doing either. I don't even know what day it is. Don't tell me. It's a better day that way. Hey, you're the man in the boots at the gates. Guno said you knew something about the armor. <laughs> that little boy had did good on his promise. His promise? To get me in trouble to sick the pigs on me. Pardon the choice of words. Not mine. What happened? I was asked to look into that armor situation. Official union probe, you know. Track it down, see who took it. Did you? At first, I thought, why not? Maybe the pieces can feed the strike. Buy us a few more days under the sun, you know? So I went to this boy. He said he'll make me his prison, bitch. He's got eyes everywhere. The cop's in his pocket, and he's the king of Jamrock. So it was me right for doing menial footwork. I dropped that probe right then and there, and it still got me in trouble. One bad move is all it takes. So Kuna used this to what? Scare you? It's a minor nuisance. It's all good. Kind of place taking a sweep from his flask. He thinks, not yet. Better to get this business out of the way. Sweeter then. Probe into the armor. What'd you learn? I learned that people don't want to talk to a drunk union man about some armor. What else? Not much. Technical stuff mostly. That was the most interesting part. What sort of technical stuff? I did some research into the armadura. Let's say I have friends at the library. He explains with a wry smile. I didn't get into the material science, just how it comes off. How does it come off? In parts, four in total. The helmet was the first to go. Kid said he tore it off and kicked it into the sea. I believe him. Boots are still in the guy the last I saw. Too hard to remove. So as I count, there are two parts missing. The gauntlets and the curies. This is where I lift off. Too much hassle. More like a job for some militia. Hold up. Four pieces. Oh, uh, they're just gone. They don't exist anymore. If they ever did, forget about them. I did. I'm going to find one piece. One is enough. Nice and balanced. Some junior officers can take care of the rest. Find one armor piece. Smart choice. It's only that one spot you need armor too. The one the bullet hits. New task. Get the hanged man's boots. Ah, there are other pieces that are easier to get. Thank you for your operation, sir. I'm looking for assistance with the dead body situation. Body still hanging in the tree. Ah, that's a rough pickle. Can't help you with that. Sorry. I'm not really an admirer of dead bodies. My so might be someone else from the union can render assistance. Does this mean you can let me through the gate? I don't operate that capacity. I'm not a grantor of passage. Passage grants itself. It's also simple. Why don't the strike pickers just go the, the stairs? That simple? I just walk in? Aye, walk right past Measurehead and go in. Past Measurehead? Yeah, the two and a half meter tall semi supremacist there. Walk right past him and then press the button to unlock the door. Then go past him again. And you enter the harbor through the office? Yes, that. So you're saying it's actually quite difficult. Don't worry, I'm sure it's not completely impossible. For example, you could best measure head in a physical confrontation, or you could convert to a semi-supremacist worldview, or maybe it actually is completely impossible. Has anyone ever bested him in a physical confrontation? Not yet, no. He is very strong. Nothing a couple solid hooks of Dexter and Sinister won't fix. Got it. Uh, has any of the scabs tried converting to his worldview? 
Sean Luke himself would say that philosophy has proven overly heroic for the scabs to convert to. Not enough intuition. Got it. Another thing. Uh, nice talk. I gotta get moving. I'm not gonna ask. Call me manana for some money. I'm gonna go try to negotiate with Measurehead. Hermetically sealed door, locked by electronic means. There's no lock picking or door kicking this one. Measurehead and his flunkies. Oh boy, how many skill points do I have banked up? Only two. That might not be enough. Putting on the tank top. <laughs> Still gotta figure out who made the call, pay for the damages, figure out where the rest of the armor is, run the number on the victim's armor, track down my badge, track down my gun, find an armor piece, and get the hangman's boots. Uh, in order to succeed, the body has to be down, the autopsy has to be finished, and Kim has to be absent. You know he wouldn't approve. This will be devilishly tricky, so don't beat yourself up if you manage to send the body to the processing without getting a hold of the boots. And eh, maybe I shouldn't get the boots. There are other pieces to find. What's up, big man? Nobody betrays your degeneracy. Oh, God. Yeah, Measurehead. His body totally betrays his degeneracy. Uh, I'm gonna size him up first. Are you with mine? My muscle physiology. Ugh. A ripple of muscle passes underneath his skin. He lets you look. It must be frightening to stand in the shadow of this Asial Pinacle. Be calm and sandwich. You are not in danger because you are not a threat to me. Jesus. My body is unimportant. I'm the police and we need to get into this harbor. That is precise. The negligence that has led you to succumb to Bangul. His face contorts in disgust as if he were smelling a dead rat. You reek of it. An invisible soul of Bangul emerged from the throat. You cannot see it, but others can. It is making the woman in my company sick. Wait, Al Ghul? Yes, Al Ghul. He means alcohol. Understood. I doubt it. My microcephalic face, so. Jesus Christ. Kim, is it really that bad? Good. Thanks, Kim. It's like a rat crawled in your stomach, got drunk, and drowned. You're right. I'm an alcoholic, and I need that dead body to no longer be in the tree. No, you don't. You need to get another thing. Occidental Uplog Group B4 is done giving all the authority. The influence of the Amazon Witch Aids is rain. I am the police, and I need you to comply. Now. Jump King Motion. Signs of a late stage neurodegenerative disorder. How far the Occidental Ablo has fallen. You were once a noble and powerful race. Oh god, this guy's disgusting. You gave the world eugenic. You say that like it's a good thing! And powerful weapons of war like missiles and aerostatic aircraft. You made great gains in metallurgy, race theory, and statecraft. Jesus Christ, measure head. You dominated lesser cultures, like the deformed Hemians and the inexplicably potato obsessed Oikos. <laughs> but now your ascent to the genetic summit has halted. You are obsessed with sadness and with frivolous pop culture. Hey, I'm not obsessed with sadness. I'm just awfully sad. You will be superseded. Isn't that right, babe? It is, baby, yeah. You know it. God. There is a button right behind him, just out of reach. It must be the one that opens the door to the harbor. Suggestion. This man is not budging. Let's hope his superiors inside are more cooperative. It was your people who put that dead body up there. Your people should help me get it down. Enough with this begging. You should leave the stage of history with dignity by inviting the other races to a great world war. What? Bring your troops to the Simenon Islands 
and to Boogie Street and we will pulverize you. When you are gone, we will build a museum. Jesus Christ. You all will be lined with water of all wood. Your beloved girl. Inside, we will store the out to homosexuality come out. And your microcephalic skull. Holy shit, I'm gonna enjoy knocking this guy out. This is your chance, he's talking. Rip into him with a punch and catch him off guard. No, there's a peaceful solution. You could internalize Measure Head's race theory. He would take you as one of his own. Wouldn't that mean I have to become a semi supremacist myself? Well, yes. Uh, why don't you want to be a semi supremacist So what if you're not Seminese? You could be anything. Um... Ugh. Ugh. I'll try knocking him out in a second. You serve the Union, don't you? Aren't they white? Don't be vulgar. White or not has got little to do with this. The race enigma runs much deeper than that. You keep telling yourself that, buddy. Mr. Clare is a man of vision and means. He has the will to confront polycultural capital, something your race, naivistic communists, never did. Also, to serve is noble. It takes discipline. Your petulant individualism has only contributed to your race failure. It is lax and moronic. What? Communism's pretty cool. Idiotic communism is the single greatest contributor to your race descent. Everywhere around you, the fruits of its failure to challenge the world order. Individualism, rock and roll music, sexually transmitted diseases. Above all, rampant multinational finance still reigning large. Tell me, where have you gotten your love of pathetic communism from? Degenerate youth culture? Rock and roll music? I uh, got it from disco, actually. Offshoots of the 70s people invented disco while having sex under the influence of cocaine. It is a shame upon my race, but what is done is done. I am not surprised you enjoy it so much. This has happened to many of the side products of the inevitable cultural victory of the 70s race. Okay, who are the 70s? The South Island race haplogroup A4A. We are the rightful masters of the Insul Indian Archipelago. We descend from the Aeropegites of ancient Perikanesis and arrived here 4,000 years ago, millennia before you. We are the future. That's all you need to know. I am a descendant. The narrow streets of Ulinbuer are with me in my genetic dreams. I see young Seminese women walk into the Grey Mass on Ile de Fantôme waiting on immaculate conception from the pale. So... You... Didn't come from the islands. No. I have heard about it on the radio. <laughs> so you're not really Seminese, you're just from Rivershall. I am from Kuron. And no, it is not just in Rivershall. This city is central to the Seminese strategy, spreading through its trade networks. Our culture will dominate the world. What in... The fuck. What are those tattoos supposed to mean? Racists are generally not pretty good examples of their race. He gestures toward the lorry man down the street. I am not like them. I am craniometric perfection. I have taken the trouble to permanently draw a phrenologic grid on my skull and features. This should dispel any doubt. Which, I mean, that is a noble cranium, but you got a hard noggin yourself. Uh, say nothing. Your silence betrays your inferiority. You do not have a reply. You should enter a deep race slumber. Perhaps in 4,000 years there is need for a servile homunculus. You know, I'll study the race theory, but I'm, let's see what it, where this brings me. Go ahead, don't be shy. Just ask for race secrets. No, I'd better stay off the topic. I'm gonna try to knock him out. Fuck! How did this happen? Your little fist in his giant hand, he's squeezing it, it hurts. You must be out of your mind, degenerate drunk. Say it. I'm a degenerate alcoholic. Fuck you. Your fist cracks in his hand like a ripe apple. Pain shoots up into your brain and he's twisting it more and more. The words, the song have changed. Say it. I am a violent drunk. Go fuck yourself. Good. Now leave before you humiliate your homoerotic organization any further. We still need to get into the harbor. 
We need help with the tree situation. There must be another way. Yeah, I'm on it. As you turn, a bright light catches your eye, making you squint. Where's it coming from? From a distant sunset? A uh, stage light? Flash photography? Nowhere in particular? It's just what superstar law officers do. They squint at lights and they solve shit. Actually, now that I hear superstar and law official in the sentence, they... Uh, yeah, that's me. I've been establishing my superstar of a lot lately. You have, you, you have, you're a big dick cop, Dick Mullen. Shalom, Rocky Bye, badass on the edge disco cop. Action! Some kind of superstar? With a sudden flash, the world freezes around you and you along with it in an iconic monochrome solution, a black silhouette against a rasterized orange world. It's on. So now we can, um... Oh, hey, I should uh, internalize inexplicable feminist agenda and some kind of superstar. Still seems unlikely. Yo, what up, Kim? I'd appreciate it if you didn't force us into situations where I may have to shoot random civilians. Because that won't get us anywhere. Not even sure the one bullet my chamber holds would even prick that hulk. Um... Can't promise I uh, can't promise that. Might attack him again. The lieutenant groans but doesn't say anything. Alright, next time on Disco Elysium. I got a strategy. I wanna I wanna get the shit in the box, which means I have to punch Measurehead in the face. And I mean punching Measurehead in the face is a reward all into its own. Good night everyone.